Hey there, Luke here. Uh, welcome to my channel and welcome to another episode where I can show you how I make things and uh, try to be cool. Anyway, so in this one, I want to say first off, Happy Halloween. Uh, I'm talking a little quiet. It's still dark outside because it's like 7 in the morning and my family's asleep and I'm in the garage like a weirdo uh, shooting YouTube videos and playing with foam armor. Uh, so anyway, back to the episode, back to this channel. So we're going to look at how I made my son's Mandalorian armor. Um, this is what he's going to be wearing tonight, actually, for Halloween very excited he's very excited it's gonna be an awesome evening so in this tutorial I'm gonna walk through how I made all the different pieces uh, how I how I made it look like there's battle damage how I formed it uh, how I made the templates how I figured all that kind of stuff out so it's a it's a kind of a lengthy tutorial but I, I walk through all the steps so comment below let me know what you think and uh, I hope you enjoy it all right <laughs> So what I did here is I actually took my son's shirt, don't tell my wife, and I had him put it on and then I literally just drew uh, half of the armor on. What I mean by that is I drew the right side uh, of how I wanted this to fit on both the front and on the back and then I was able to lay, uh, lay my templates on over that. And then after I cut my templates out, I set those down on the foam. Um, I use little pins to keep my templates from moving around and then I just trace it out uh, with a pen and then I make all of my cuts. So we're actually going to start with the back because it's the most complicated piece of all these. Um, right there I'm extending the tab that goes over his left shoulder and that's to account for the, the radius curve, the, the stretch that's going to go over his shoulder so it meets up really well with the neckline. Um, so I'm starting with the left side here, you can see, and I'm uh, tracing all around my template with the pen. And then I'm gonna flip that over because it's just a mirror. I'm gonna flip that template over uh, to do the right side. So now here I'm on the right side doing the same thing. I'm gonna extend that tab up just enough so I can get up over his shoulder when I bend all these pieces. Um, and then I'm going to cut this out. So we got all the pieces cut out and my son here is helping me uh, lay these down on the shirt so that he can see um, where all these pieces are gonna be. But I thought it'd be a good image for you guys to see as well. Uh, after I used the templates drawn from the shirt or pulled from the shirt, cut out of the foam, uh, then you can lay it all down and see kind of a glimpse into the future, how it's all gonna work. And here my son and I are just being uh, kind of dorky. So we're trying to do thumbs up. I'm trying to get him to uh, also do a thumbs up. He doesn't quite know where the camera is. So there we go. Boom. He's my dude. So here is the backside. We're going to do the same thing. We're throwing the uh, shoulder armor on and then here's the back piece now that it's all cut out. And you see how when I extended those tabs, they're gonna they're gonna bend perfectly right over his shoulder. It's gonna look great. Um, so starting with the back, because like I said, it's the most complicated piece. Uh, there's this indent in in that back. So I'm laying my template down, and I'm actually just poking holes through the paper where I want these to be. You can't really see it on the camera. I apologize for that, but you can see it well when you're when you're actually making it. Um, so I'm gonna use my little triangle there make sure I get straight lines and I'm uh, tracing all those dots like I said you can't see it I'm trying to show it but you can't really see it but I've got all those dots so then I connected the dots with the line like a cool kids game and then I take out my razor blade here and you're gonna make one fine cut down uh, the center of that line and then you're gonna make another cut at like 45 or 30 degrees and this is gonna be a back cut you pull that material out um, this will allow bend in the foam. It'll give you kind of a crease on the other side uh, so that when this all gets heated up and molded, uh, I, I use the term molded very loosely, when, you, when all gets heated up and formed, um, you'll be able to see these cool indents and creases and lines uh, on the armor. They're just gonna pop and they're gonna look really awesome. So after getting those side tabs cut, I'm cutting this big uh, back cut that is gonna be in there um, on the back side of his armor that uh, it kinda has this arc at the top and then it comes straight down uh, the torso. 
So I'm cutting those those pieces out, making my first cut, and then here's the the angled cut, so I can so I can do uh, kind of a back cut. I can cut material out of the foam in order to give it a nice bend and curvature. And uh, this is where I would say be very careful um, when you do this because I've cut myself one time. I've cut myself. I'll I'll admit it, and I actually did go to the uh, emergency room, and uh, it it wasn't fun. So. <clears throat> Be very careful when you're making these cuts and you have your hands uh, right there. So after you pull all that material, um, you can start bending the foam. This is before you heat it. Uh, you can start bending that foam to get these um, lines that you'll put in. And uh, you'll see on the back here how that is starting to pop out so that you can see this indent, um, these angles that are going to be in it. And it's, it's going to look awesome. Uh, it's a pretty cool trick that, uh, that people do. So here I am heating it up and as you heat up foam it expands and when it cools it kind of keeps the shape. You can't do very radical, uh, radical um, I guess stretching or radical uh, curves with foam but you can do some pretty decent curves. So I get it, I get it heated up with that heat gun there and then I just start wrenching on it and stretching that foam and as it cools it's going to start holding that shape so after it's all heated um, you can see now it's got that indent in the back so that looks pretty cool and then right here i'm, I'm actually putting uh, battle damage so you want to do this prior to painting and weathering um, while the foam is still in its raw state so I'm actually just taking that putty knife there to get some different uh, sizes of cuts and scrapes and then I'm going back over different spots with my razor blade um, to, to make those a little more fine cuts. And if you notice on the edges there, I kind of take that razor blade, I don't kind of, I do, I take, I take that razor blade and uh, I give it lots of cuts on the edges and that's just to represent where, um, if you would, the armor has been uh, taken away by by aging, weathering, scrapes, battle damage, whatever whatever you want to uh, think of. Um, it's just to represent that. So I go through with the razor blade and with the putty knife, and I kind of just ding this stuff up uh, all over the place. And then I'm going to take the heat gun and um, make all of those open up with heat. So I'm just adding some last minute slash in and uh, cutting in the foam and indents uh, just to get it the way I like it. And that's the, the fun part about this is once you guys make your armor, uh, whatever armor that may be, um, you get to have fun and uh, dent it up, make it look like it's been in battle, make it look like it's been through a tornado, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, this is the fun stuff uh, with foam smithing. So, so then I take the heat gun again, uh, hit that, just make sure everything looks the way I want it to look because really it, it just matters to me and my, my little dude how he wants it to look. Um, and then there you go, it's ready to start gluing those, those back cuts, those inner seams. So you don't need a whole lot of glue for the inner seams. Um, you can just get some, some good amount of glue uh, in there, I guess, just fill up the gap. Uh, and then after you get the glue inside, then you're gonna wanna bend it and hold that position. That's the important part. Hold that position until the glue dries. So after you get uh, one side done and formed uh, with the glue dry, then you can start on the other side and get all that done. Here I'm hitting those tabs on the sides on the, the, the kidney side armor. Um, we're getting, I'm getting the glue in those as well and uh, so I can hold those until they, uh, they dry. This is probably the most time consuming part, uh, but the benefit of it is this. It looks awesome. The inside, yeah, it's got glue, it looks dirty, uh, but the outside looks great. It's got good seams, good bends. Um, so then we're moving on. So here's now the abdomen uh, armor plate and I'm actually setting the template on the inside because that's where I'm gonna make my cut. So I lay that down, um, poke holes in it so I know where to make my straight lines. Uh, I'm gonna cut those lines out uh, with my razor blade and then I'm gonna fill those up with glue, heat it up, form it, same process as the back. 
So there we go, the abs look great. Looks like he's been to the gym. My little five-year-old, working out man, Mandalorian. Um, I'm a dork. Anyway, so now we're gonna move on to the shoulders. And same thing, lay the template on the inside. Go ahead and make all your lines on it. Uh, cut it out, do a back cut to pull that material out and then glue it, form it, and you have shoulders. And here's the neck, so this part was fun. Um, after you get this all cut out, uh, there's actually no back cutting on this piece. Um, the, like I was saying, the miraculous thing about foam is that when you heat it up, you can stretch it and, and, and form it, and you can't make radical uh, bends, but you can make some really good ones. And so uh, here I just got it really hot, and I'm just getting in there with my hands, and I'm starting to roll those edges, stretch it right here, just to get it the way I want. And as it cools, it's gonna hold that shape. Um, so that's how the neck made. It was a really quick and easy piece. And done. Which brings us to the chest armor. So I laid the template on the back made all my uh, lines, cut out my material that I needed to, uh, did my gluing, and <clears throat> then um, after I formed it kind of the way I wanted it to look and the way it fit uh, my little dude the best, um, I actually lined it up together to do the, uh, the weather. And what I mean by that is I stuck the two pieces together like this and then I just made some big cuts right across both. That way I got the angle right, uh, the depth that I wanted on, on the two pieces just so that it, it would look like you know he was in a battle somewhere or, or fell off of a building and, and got hit at that, at that exact spot. And it would just look somewhat cool and uh, unbelievable for foam armor. And my little dude was so excited uh, to try it on so we actually just uh, like masking taped it <laughs> to a shirt so he could try it on because uh he was so excited and there you go that's how i made the mandalorian and here's a couple of shots of uh of him after it's all painted and weathered uh wearing it he was so excited uh to put this on um we've actually worn it a couple of times around the house just playing him and his brother and that is the mandalorian armor thanks for watching